Hey, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. And we're the Rambling Reviewers. And today we're looking at the finale of uh, Korra, uh, uh, yeah, book two. So, it's our completed Korra coverage as far as this season is concerned. <laughs> but it's still part of our continuing Korra coverage. Right, because it's going to continue later on. We're going we're gonna to keep exactly. watching this show. We, we always complain about it. And someone, I'm sure, if I asked, by now has asked us, why do we watch this? We always complain. Because it's instructive. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I like to, especially when it's something that has potential and it's not being used to its full extent. That's great, like, fertile ground for a writer to go like, ah, this is what I would fix. This is what's wrong. This is, you know, lessons to Precisely. learn. Precisely. Plus, there are still good elements to oh, the yeah. show. Oh, yeah. There definitely are good elements. It's, yeah. It's not, this... like, it's not like Star Wars Holiday Special is something you're just like, what the hell am I watching? You know, it's not like that. It's just like, we know it could be more. So many images. Oh, yeah. Certainly. Uh, especially this finale. There's a lot of great, like, art and, and, you know, imagery and stuff and ideas. But then they were crammed in in a weird, dumb way. And it didn't add up. And you were like, come on, man. You... Okay, I can't say so, I'm surprised. But, so yeah. it starts off with them all in the spirit world. Um, uh, Tenzin, Bumi, and Kaya are wandering around, literally not knowing where to go. Uh, and they, the only now are they considering, wait, we don't know what we're doing. We're wandering around aimlessly. Uh, Bumi says, wait, we can out. track her by her footprints. And so what I think Kai asks, do you even know what spirit footprints look like? I mean, honestly, I think they look like feet, considering everyone seems, you know, it's like a physical world. But Yeah, yeah. except that we, every spirit we've seen has been flying, pretty much, except for like a uh, few. Well, at least the marrying frogs and so mm -hmm. forth, but yeah. Oh, and then, uh, Bo and then Kaya says, wait, I can track them via spiritual energy. Which she has shown zero ability zero to. Zero times, yeah. You think that would have come up in the episode She's, when they're trying so to get into points, the spirit world. There is massive amounts of spiritual energy that way. She must be that way. Which movie responds, we're in the spirit world! <laughs> There's spiritual energy everywhere! Uh, so I do like Boomy uh, making fun of everything and pointing that out. At the same time, yeah, it doesn't make sense she would try that. And we're in the middle of a climax. It wouldn't. It, this sort of scene would go halfway through this show when nothing dramatic is happening and we have time to joke around, you know? Instead, it's like, I thought the end of the world, Janora's gonna die, the... I don't... You know, it, it, it felt like a bit of mood whiplash to me. Oh, certainly, when it yeah. happened. And the fucking the talking mushroom, which is funny by itself. <laughs> yes, We've seen that mushroom five times. No, we haven't. That's not the same mushroom. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's funny, except end of the world over here. Wouldn't you... We don't have time for this. Shouldn't Tenzin be, like, really freaked out about finding Janora as soon as possible? Like, wasn't that a thing earlier? Uh, and then, uh, okay, the fight scenes are, as always, awesome to the highest degree. They're very well choreographed and animated and so forth. Yeah. So, um, basically, Korra goes into the Avatar state, but appears to go in and out of it. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, fighting um, against dark Avatar... Unalak. Unalak. Just call Unalak. Um, and then, then he uses Vatu to rip out Rava and and beats the beats it like a rent beats Rava like a rented mule and destroys her connection to the past Avatar spirits. Right, and destroys Rava too. Yeah. Uh, so Rava's dead, and Korra, and it's just some you know chance for drama here when you're not only threatening the character's life but also like the underpinnings of our universe type of thing. Like, yeah. everything is, the whole, the writing is constructed around there being an avatar. Wait, could, there's not an avatar. Are we changing that? It's some, you know, interesting mm -hmm. drama there. Um, but, that, okay, so, and then, and then in the meantime, we're looking for Janora. Mm -hmm. And I don't get this logic at all. It goes, first, we'll run under random direction. Then we'll get lost. Uh, and we bump into Iroh, who casually mentions a place where only the lost can find you. So clearly what we need to do is taunt a scorpion thing, giant scorpion thing, and it will throw us into this place where they keep lost people and there's a And and not rape our souls or eat us. And, and, well, yeah, I mean, first off, I don't, actually, I don't even know if you can kill things within the spirit world. Well, you killed Rava, so yes, I guess you can, never mind. Well, that uh, was in the real world that the, Rava was killed. Was it? No. Yes, it was. Was it? Yes, it was. They went through the portal. They were outside. Uh, Bolin and Mako were running towards them. Uh, Didn't Bolin and Mako escape their captors and go through the portal to get to the Tree of Time zone? Yeah, but then they escaped their captors again and exited the portal to get back to Korra. Yeah, okay, I was confused as to where everything was happening. 
Yeah, but uh, anyway, so uh, whatever. So so okay. So they, they'll throw us in this fog, and I like the idea of this fog. It's the fog is actually a spirit, and it messes with your mind, and it makes you lost forever. And Zhao is there, you know. Oh uh, yeah. Although I I did question the logic behind it. Yes. Throw the airbender, the individual capable of powered individual flight, yeah. into an open-topped canyon. Yeah. Yes, clearly this is the best plan. Well, then, uh, so then, like, he tries to banish the the fog later, and it doesn't quite work, you know. And, and I boom. thought, I just assumed, okay, it's evil fog, it's different, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it was weird. What makes you think Janora is there at all? She was captured by Unalak. Shouldn't she be, like, at Unalak's base somewhere, chained up, you know, like you what, would do with a normal prisoner? Or, or, or inside, like, the home of one of his allies in the spirit world, like Wan Shi Tong? Yeah. Which one was that again? The owl spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah, The yeah. reason Janora got captured in the first place. I always just thought place. it was the owl spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it, just stuff her in the library somewhere. I don't yeah. Care. Heck, bury her under books. Have her, cata- have her categorize everything by the Dewey Decimal System. And just randomly, uh, what happened to that dragon that saved Korra last time? Yeah, Phoenix. You'd think it but... was Dragon Phoenix or something. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, why do they even need a Dragon Phoenix when they already have full-blown dragons? Well, you said that, I mean, whatever. They mix everything. I don't care. Well, My point is, there was a very powerful thing in the jig that clearly cared about Korra last time she was at this location, and now can't be bothered. Yeah, and even worse, the Phoenix thing was... It was shown off in the previews for the show, so clearly this was a part they wanted people to see. And it only shows up in one episode? What the fuck? Yeah, well, I guess that happens a lot with previews. But, uh, but yeah, oh, and and from that episode, when it did show up, we had this whole, because she's the Avatar, especially because she's the Avatar, but also works for everybody, her emotional state influences her surroundings, and we liked that idea. Yeah. And it completely disappeared. <laughs> Did she pacify any Stark spirits by becoming... That'd be interesting. Like, a whole yeah, she, army she comes she pacified at... those three spirits, but then they turned evil again. Instantly. The... I complained about this in our last review of that episode. Yeah. Wait, which three are we talking about? Oh, the, the ones with the... Yeah. The run... Yeah, but in this episode, I mean, in the finale, here's what would be cool. A freaking army of Dark spirits is coming at her, and they're like, we have to fight. And she goes, no, and, like, meditates... And then they all calm down, you know? Yeah. And they'd be like, ah, I see a clever little thing you did there. And it's not a fighting. You did something different. But that didn't happen again. It was just like, oh, this episode only. Never mind. Korra. The, where potential goes to die. Yeah, kind of. Um, and so they, um, so... Unalak, for some reason, turns giant. Even though that's like on the list of things I will never do if I'm an evil overlord. <laughs> I will never turn into a snake or a giant monster because it never helps. Yeah, well. And, and he turns yeah. into a giant and, you know, of course, Q, Evangelion, and Pacific Rim jokes. I mean, that's fine. I mean, I can go, I, you know, I'd be, I'd be like those things. Okay, so but I was, uh, okay, uh... and then he goes to Republic City for some reason. Why would you go to Republic City when, uh, you know, the the Southern Water Tribe is right there? It is much closer than Republic City. Yeah, I mean, he does deface the Aang statue, but, you know, that'd be helpful if he actually had a thing against Aang for some reason. Yeah, otherwise you know, it's like, just, like, you know... like, like, Amon did. He had an actual thing against Aang. And his he, fan, you know. he crippled his father right, and uh, right. is a symbol of everything that he strives against. Right, which, but, I, yeah, Unog okay, is more vague. Go, okay, if yeah. he's against the Avatar, then sure, defacing a statue of the the most famous avatar in history yeah. you know that sort of fits his motivation but at this point he's more of destroy the world I didn't and it doesn't know really what he was doing yeah it isn't even really destroying the statue the statue just kind of falls over and I mean, it's in it, the water it made it for a cool image when it was its face is in the water it became Korra's face type of thing but i don't know what he's up to at this point is he the vatu style actually destroy everything down to its atoms is he trying to conquer? Is he like, I don't know, I will make a new world. Did you, did you need to knock down the buildings? So then, did you need vines? Is that important to your new, what is, what's uh, and, your new and, world and, and, are we making course, here? It's the same problem that kids' cartoons run into a lot. You know, you have to show them being destructive, but you can't show them actually destroying things. Yeah, yeah. So instead of, or you know, using people, yeah. his chest laser to... Just to, take out buildings. To, yeah. you know, reduce entire communities to ash. Yeah. It's all that happens. All that happens is he makes vines grow over everything. Yeah, yeah. And allows uh, Varric to escape. And he, and which, he, le- which leads yeah. to one of the best lines in the finale. Yeah. Uh, Julie, prepare Operation Winged Freedom! And Julie has a pack on her back that unfolds into wings. She grabs onto Varric, jumps out of the, the hole that the vines knocked in the wall, mm. 
And as they're puppeting, Julie, do the thing! <laughs> yeah, these wings expand and they fly to freedom. Yeah. They're not seen again. But I like that line, yeah. That it, do the thing! Right. This great line. Um, so... So yeah, he's taking stuff. He's, like, he's poning the uh, the uh, military and stuff. Uh, yeah, and uh, then he just makes August. vines over everything, but does nothing else. Woo! The destruction and chaos. Yeah. You you a brought big. the arboretum to. I mean, you know, it was, he was taking out military things and whatever, but yeah, it was just kind of vague, and he felt it was vague. And he doesn't do anything with this. He could be, like, using vines to rip buildings off and throw them into other buildings. Well, yeah. He could be, like, strangling people. The, the, but no, no, the, he Like, when Korra comes back... He's sort of standing there. He's still yeah. in the same position. No yeah. one has done anything. What yeah. happened to the bomb? The bombers? What happened to the, the, the leagues of... Of mecha tanks that were capable of firing anti-air weapons. Uh, did the Republic City actually have the mecha tanks? Well, I assume they confiscated them from. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but whatever. I mean, I I could say I could guess that he just took out all the bombers eventually off-screen type of thing. But yeah, yeah it's it was it wasn't quite what was going on. And then we're back at the the uh, the fog place. And Tenzin has this minor epiphany of like, I don't have to be my father again. A thing that would have been great if it had built up. It more intelligently in previous episodes. Yeah, or I mean, they like if this... they made it super clear that I consider myself the heir to my father's legacy. I have to be like my father. Right. I mean, they, they had a little bit. Like, I'll grant you, you know, and they had this bit wasn't... of him. He couldn't get to the spirit world. But, you know, that was vague in its own way of like, I thought it, no one could get to this spirit world. Why are you even, this is, why is this a thing? I don't get it. And then Kaya is all meditating. I can sense spiritual energy. What are the rules of this spirit world? Somebody lay them out for me. Ugh. Um, yeah, a little and, bit, you know. And so Tenzin comes back, and he uh, and they find uh. Boom. Well, well, he he has this epiphany which clears off the entire fog somehow, not just for him. Yeah. Oh yes, and uh, so it shows like there's hundreds of people in there, including we know Zhao. Yeah. From the first series, he's yeah. been in there for like seventy years by this point. Yeah. And he only grabs his brother, his sister, and his daughter. He doesn't try to help anyone else. Quick. <laughs> People from all ages of history, you are invaluable looks back into the deep, distant reaches of the past on the socio-political uh, situations, yeah. <laughs> on culture, on technology, on bending. How did you wind up in the spirit world? We could. This is yeah. incredibly valuable information that we could use. How often does that happen? Everyone seems to show up in the spirit world nowadays. Yeah, and, and then like, nope, nope, we're just going to leave all this valuable scientific and cultural information just sitting around here. <laughs> now, oh, and not that's not even considering the humanitarian aspect of leaving all these people in the insanity-causing right, right. fog. Now, I'll, I'll give you, well, there's a couple points to this of A, you can always come back tomorrow, and B, we don't much need cultural information when the world is doomed. Let's fix that first. But it would have been a nice scene if he calls out to them and we get like a whole sort of uh, Moses and the Red Sea thing and he leads them out and that becomes like his epic moment, you know. Oh yeah, that would have been, been Could have been kind of cool. And then we could leave them beside while we go save the world, but then, you know. Or heck, they could help hold off the army of dark spirits that comes ah, to take yeah, Korra's body that later. That would have be been a, a really cool scene. I don't know how many of those people are benders, but they could help out somehow. Yeah, we have Zhao. We have Zhao. We uh, yeah. We don't want to trust Zhao, do we? Yeah. yeah. I want to see the Moon Spirit walk up to him in the spirit world and just punch him out. <laughs> <laughs> it would be freaking. What was her name? Yui. Uh, Yue. Yue. You would just just Yue walks up to him and like smacks him across the face. Yeah, it's been seventy years. I think that's like the. I mean, heck, we don't. We have murder sentences that don't last that long. I think. Well, we have life in prison. Well, yeah. So if you were twenty, but if you're then... made immortal, but if you're made immortal, then <laughs> all, right, all right, we're getting into other things now. So, so he gets them all out, and uh, so Janora is like, "Oh, I can sense the people are in trouble." What is the scope of your powers, Janora? I would love to know because you and, keep and making them up. Where did you practice these powers? Because it was implied that, oh, I can see spirits. Okay, fine. That came a little out of left field that you can send spirits because it wasn't mentioned at all in the first series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then suddenly, oh, I can get into the spirit world. Of course you can because why not? Suddenly, okay, but suddenly, yeah. Janora's like, this light spirit will guide you. No, I have to go. My planet needs me. <laughs> and, then, and then she teleports out. Like, you, know, you can be, teleport? <laughs> wouldn't that have been unbelievably massively useful when Udalak tried to imprison you? <laughs> now, I shall he'll turn her into a dark... <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'm not doing that. And right. then Korra kills him. Hey, right. and then you also, I mean, just know the spirits want to tell them things and whatever. I mean, what I don't know. 
she did navigate it a little earlier because she was able to talk to the owl guy and stuff but she suddenly seems like a sage of spiritualness she's like eight and she's like and i'll tell you something when what you know i can get behind this idea of like the child with like mysterious amount of power and stuff yeah, you've got to do it right a child it's, innocent of the yeah, world's darkness yeah. okay sure that has been a, a trope for many years yeah, yeah. that is that is been like a thing yeah. for a long time i just wish i knew her better and knew like the, this world better and i knew you know it just it had, it what are the click. rules behind spiritual manipulation yeah um i think they're trying to do too many things at once here uh, oddly enough um so yeah she teleports away and she tells them this spirit will guide you out and wait let's recount this she gives them the butterfly to lead them out which leads them to the portal which leads them to the battlefield which leads them to Korra. okay, okay fine. But let's Let's save that uh, little rant for a little later because we still have to recount the other moments of stupid on the way up to that. Okay, which ones? Go ahead. Uh, okay. So uh, they go to Korra and they find out, oh no, I'm so sad because Rava was taken from me. Bitch, you didn't know Rava existed until like a week ago. Right. Um, well, okay. Well, I, I can understand she being sad. That's fine. That's totally okay, fine. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Tenzin says, no. Wait, I've read about this place. <laughs> no, and, and you could almost hear no, the no, no I mean, exploding. Because you from told my me mind. there would be a Deus Ex Machina, so I'm I looking know. at this like, oh dear, this is gonna be it, isn't it? This is good. All I was thinking is, no, there is a way to gain incredible power, and all I was thinking is, oh, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> this is gonna hurt so much. Yeah. The tree that Batu was kept in is the tree of time, and it binds together the mortal world and the phys- and the spirit uh, world. Yeah. So all Korra has to do is meditate under the root inside of the tree where Vatu was for 10,000 years. Yeah, because that probably doesn't leave any residue or dark energy I guess at not. all. Yeah. Um, I love what meditate it, it, there yeah. and gain internal cosmic power. And it shows the same scene from Avatar The Last Airbender, except instead of a giant cosmic energy Aang, it's a giant cosmic energy Korra. Okay. First problem I have with this. Yeah. It took Aang an entire episode in which he had incredible... He went through spiritual growth, personally. He went through personal spiritual growth. Right. And keep in mind that he was a monk. He was trained since birth yeah. in the art of spiritual enlightenment. Yeah. So all this stuff, this should be second nature to him. It took him an entire episode. Korra, as I pointed out, is a self-centered bitch at times. <laughs> she has... The first well, season, yeah. her whole thing was she has no spiritual growth until the Deus Ex Machina at the end. Yeah, pretty much. So how is it that Korra has an easier time unlocking her internal cosmic energy mm-hmm. than Aang did when Aang's entire life up to that point was unlocking internal cosmic growth? And and, and, and there's a second point to that, because first off is it being plausible, and secondly just it being interesting. Because if Korra had, you know, an epiphany of some sort that was, like, really made sense to us, and like, oh, it's very interesting, she's overcome this mental block she's had for a long time. But then, she then didn't. You can, yeah, that she didn't. She was just, oh, I'll just meditate then. It was like, can you do more with your, in, in, in the mechanics what did you of your feelings? What did you reveal about yourself? What have you learned? Aang, yeah. Aang it was a whole thing about letting go of attachments. What right. do you feel guilty about? Yeah. I feel guilty about unleashing the Avatar spirit in the north and right. killing people. Right. I feel guilty about all the times I've hurt or scared my friends. Yeah. I feel guilty about abandoning my people. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a whole series of things. What do you have that you attaches you to the world i have katara that attaches me to the world right. i care for her so much that i can't even achieve enlightenment because i care for her too much right i right. would let the world burn yeah and katara would still be holding me back yeah yeah but uh, Korra, nope i'm on the floaty walkway <laughs> and i'm getting cosmic energy and then i turn into a giant uh, mecca and <laughs> fly I, mean, away. I touch the st louis archway and i fly away to the republic city I mean, it's just the same as the end of the the first season this is like Korra's in a bad spot and it wasn't in the middle of the climax it was in the, it was in the aftermath but still Korra's in a bad spot and like suddenly ding you know first off it was you get your bending back and now it's you get uh, god power you know like you get to be a freaking godzilla and, and here's the we wouldn't mind so much if you didn't keep giving cora all these incredible godlike cosmic powers and she doesn't use them to solve the problems when it's really obvious that she should like for example yeah. um 
at the beginning of this two-parter, uh, Unalak is like, now I shall fuse with Ra with Vatu, and I will be... Here's what should have happened. Korra should have gone Avatar State, summoned a bullet of rock, and fired it <laughs> straight through his head, reducing it to a greasy smear on the landscape. <laughs> Suddenly, he has no host... <laughs> I mean, that could have even been a better one. It takes over Bolin. Suddenly, she has, suddenly she has an actual dilemma. That would have been cool. Yes. <laughs> Instead of some guy we wanted to kill, yeah. Bolin. You'd be stuck in like, you know, oh my gosh, what are we doing? I like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of, you know, this sort of talking as a free action. Oh, I will mention what an evil thing I'm doing. Later on, he's all like, you know... Now that Rava is gone, I am the one true avatar. You keep talking, just fight. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so anyway, she teleports to uh, Republic City, which Vatu is... St Unalak is still trying to wrap it up in vines, yeah. despite the fact that this is clearly not doing anything except damaging the one wall that Varric has to be standing yeah, you in know, front you, of. You, you could easily have a couple of shots of, like, Rubble falling down, crowds screaming, people running. The, the the bending arena imploding. Yeah, just a couple of shots, and we could be like, oh, people are in danger from the rubble, I see. Yeah, <laughs> instead, it, it just looks like this is like, you have expected to hear a weather report. Eh. <laughs> well, Bob, it looks like there's going to be some vines uh, clogging up the well, downtown. We, we, we did. The guy was on the radio. There are vines everywhere. Like, this is as much well, as we got. Well, yeah, but... At it, least that guy was panicked about it. That but, guy was yeah. panicked. This just feels like it should be covered in a weather report. Well, looks like the Dan Ryan's gonna be clogged up all the way, uh, all the way to Midway. But yeah. on the plus side, it looks like it's gonna be sunny tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna do? Something like that. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, so, I'm sure some people watched this and they were like, "Wow, this is so epic!" But we, we just know it could have been done better. You know? And then they start doing Beam of War, which. One, how does Korra know how to fire lasers out of her chest? How is Korra as powerful as the Dark Avatar anyway, who has killed Ra... I mean, just cosmic energy, a deus ex machina. Wouldn't yeah, it I be mean, great if I we mean, were leading one... up to cosmic energy the whole season and then it happens instead uh, of and it here's just the happening thing. at the end? Uh, one of uh, Unalak's major strengths the whole time has been said, oh, he knows so much about spirits. Yeah. Wouldn't he know about cosmic energy and be doing everything in his power to unlock cosmic energy? Yeah. Shouldn't he already know about this and be able to just overpower Korra in seconds? Why doesn't Unalak merge with Vatu and then the two of them can meditate in the tree and then they can be even more powerful? Yeah. If it's that easy... Also, if it's that easy, why doesn't everybody do this? Yeah, that should, that's how it should have happened. Freaking All of them should have just... Tenzin sits down, turns into a giant. Bodin sits down, turns into a giant. <laughs> like, Marco sits down, turns into a midget. I mean, you would say, oh, it's because <laughs> she's the Avatar, but she's not the Avatar at that moment. She has no Rava. She has no special status of any kind. And we see other people are capable of doing it. Remember Guru Pachik, the guy who showed Aang how to do this? Though he didn't turn into a giant, but yes, he at least knew that he knew the basics of how this thing was supposed to work. Also, you know, was, was this a thing? Thing back in the past, whenever you gained spiritual enlightenment and <laughs> cosmic turned power, you turn into a blue out. giant. Ah. And of course, Korra has to be blue and not, you know, some more fitting color like green. Is green better somehow? I don't know. I always picture her more of puke green than. <laughs> I think that's blue. a judgment on how you feel about the show. No, no, not not <laughs> on the show. The show is good. I just feel in judgment of Korra. No. Um. Okay. So then. They're fighting. And they fight, and, and they fight, fight, and they fight, fight and they fight. fight. And it is impressive. Uh, it is impressive. Um, um, and then uh, Janora shows up. Like, flies out of the sky in this orb of light, and wouldn't it be cool if... The that had been foreshadowed or right. explained how she knew how to fucking do that. If, <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's... I mean, because it, cause I could see this as a really epic... Thing. And then here comes the child who knows the ways of the spirits. Who and, yeah, very and, messianic. Very approach. messianic. It could Except have been so for cool. one problem, we already have a messianic figure in Avatar, I mean, and it's the fucking <laughs> Avatar. I, I, I could go for two. I could go for the Avatar has to be helped out by someone who knows something she doesn't, you know, type of thing. If there had been a stronger bond between Korra and Janora. Then this is two episodes they had together, you know. Yeah. And they just sort of hung. And they didn't even hang out because they got split up so quickly. Like, yeah. By wouldn't the... it be great if they like, knew each other more? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, she's the friend of the daughter of her mentor or whatever. But she's just, technically just, her granddaughter. You, they, there's a lot more we could have done here. There's just so much more could have been built okay, up to so, make this so much better. So yes, and then Janora explodes apparently. 
Uh, yeah, but she's okay later. But yeah, she she does yeah, and, she does and that thing. awakens and that awakens Rava because earlier it had been said that oh yeah even if Rava is destroyed or Vatu is destroyed he will be reborn in the spirit of the other. Yeah. But apparently Janora can jumpstart that process now. Like, yeah. That's Deus Ex Machina again. <laughs> uh, okay. And so then suddenly Rava's growing in him like a chestburster. So. Except it doesn't actually chestburst, yeah. which I was extremely disappointed yeah. at. So we grab Rava out of him, and then we get our Rava back, and I guess Korra plus Rava plus cosmic energy is enough to take care of. Yeah, he does, the, plus he does the spirit pacification thing on. Uh, Unalak, I'm just gonna call him Unalak. <laughs> Unalak, and that works for some reason. It makes him nice. No, it doesn't. Pass- it makes him dead. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, still, it's him. still the nicest he's ever been. <laughs> it's the nicest he's ever been. Yeah, I was wondering because we, yeah, he was doing that. I'm like, so is he gonna be like really chill now? And he's like, his head disappeared. I'm like, oh, it's a it, version two. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it, well, another thing that I would like to point out. Yeah. Uh, you just destroyed Vatu. Isn't this gonna? Isn't destroying evil like just as bad as destroying good? Uh, I would say in general, no. But in this particular case, the question is, isn't Vatu going to burst out of your chest? Well, actually, uh, there was once this series of books called The Unicorns of Atalanta. Mm -hmm. Um, And at one point, they had the magic of the world thrown out of balance because the main hero accidentally took an artifact outside of the universe. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the thing, one of the things uh, about it was that the good guys suddenly got a huge amount more magic. Yeah. Unfortunately, this meant that they couldn't control the magic. Yeah. So both the bad guys and the good guys had to work together to get the magic back in balance. Right. But not every universe has to run on those rules. Well, yes, I know that. Okay. What I'm just saying is that this universe apparently does run on it because it says that light and dark can exist both exist in a person. And yeah. And if but darkness there is... cannot be utterly destroyed neither but, can but, light but but previously we put darkness in a prison for ten thousand years and the world was okay but it still existed well yeah but i don't know that wasn't that wasn't so they weren't talking the whole time about how we need to rebalance light and dark they were talking about defeating vatu so i was like okay the rule is we defeat him and in some way he still exists because he gets reborn later and that's my question why doesn't he get reborn right now apparently you need a dark genora to do that for you or something i don't know yeah so or is Korra screwing over some future avatar like like uh, some future avatar when the world at peace is like ah i feel nice and calm and <laughs> <laughs> pretty much okay like, like a z- fucking Let, xenomorph let's, let's get to that timeline i was talking about earlier uh, they free Janora from the thing. By the way, Janora is capable of saving the world, but not capable of having an epiphany inside the fog for some reason. Like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's kind of vague. Um, but uh, they save Janora. She goes, "I'll lead this butterfly. Will lead you out. I have something to do." And then she teleports away. Now they go and they find Korra. Korra goes to the tree. Korra turns into uh, God mode and goes to Republic City. And then Janora shows up. Where has Janora been this whole time? Because apparently she knew in advance where Korra was going to be and activated a very slow teleport system, which got her there, you know, ten minutes after the fact. And if you could do this, why not say, oh, Korra's about to have Rava ripped out of her. I'm going to stop them by, you know, shining a really bright light into Unalak's face. Wait, wasn't Rava already ripped out of her at that point? Mm. I think it was. Um, oh yeah, it was. That, yeah, but still, like you should have like been. Yeah, Rava getting ripped out was the thing that made Janora go like something's wrong. I must teleport away really slowly. Yeah, and te- and go to Republic City for some reason. No, yeah, I... but, but see, here's the thing: if you can teleport, then teleport to, to and prevent Vat Rava from being destroyed. Yeah, man, that would help. Um, yeah, and then we wouldn't have to sever the connection with all the past lives. Just... Meaning that the next Avatar, the only experience and wisdom they're going to get is from fucking Korra. <laughs> That's, I mean, Korra, I, the I, dumbass. I mean, I, I do like the idea in the abstract of uh, really changing up your world. You know, like, we had to lose the past lives. Well, that is going to be different now for the next and Avatar. They, and and you know. that was a plot point that they kind of foreshadowed slightly, hmm. or, or at least something similar, in the comic series, oh, uh, yeah? The Promise, which... Um, 
all of Aang's past lives kept advising him to keep the nation separate when it was a new world that was trying to be more unified. Right. So eventually Aang decided that he didn't need the advice of his past lives. He was going to forge his own path. Yeah. Yes. So I can get behind that. And I get behind that feeling of like, wow, something big has changed here type of thing. Um, but yeah, the execution of it was... And just where, I don't know. Where did Janora go when she teleported? All I can tell, think is it was a very slow teleport for no reason. And she would knew in advance where Korra was going to be. In, in uh, which case, if she knew in advance where Korra was going to be, then you should tell... Then why not set a stable time loop in place or something? This, like, maybe she Set did? up the events. Um, say, okay, you need to tell Korra about the cosmic energy so that she gains the power to defeat Maybe Uralok. she's omniscient, omniscient enough to know that Tenzin was going to say those words. Which, by the way, is one of the funniest lines in the thing. After Korra walks out uh, God style and Boomy just goes, What did you say to her exactly? <laughs> <laughs> So, no, see, Ma, I can't understand why the rest of them were, didn't take one look at each other and then just start climbing yeah, over each other yeah. to get into the tree. Yeah. Um, also, the word spirit is a bit odd when he's talking about, I need you to access your inner spirit. Oh, Rava's gone. No, 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 your spirit, spirit. And I'm like, okay, wait, now we have two definitions of spirit. Say soul. Soul. Say personality. Yeah. Say your inner fire. I would say There's soul. There's like a 20 good children. It was just a little confusing. Like, which which sort of spirit are we talking with the spirit or whatever? Um, You're not being clever by being confusing. <laughs> yeah, so that was weird. So then, yeah, so we killed Vatu and Alak. Uh, and then we go home. And, and I, I then... like this one little moment. Where she... Oh, we have to backtrack for a little bit. Well, I'll say this one first. Uh, she talks to, to Esna and Desna. What the frick are their names? Those two people. Uh, <laughs> both uh, the like, creepy twins. The creepy twins. And, and she says, I'm sorry about your father. And I thought, isn't that interesting after you've killed the bad guy to apologize to his children? Who perhaps have repented a little and they've maybe joined the good guys. I like the idea of that moment. And then they're like, oh, we don't care about him anymore. And I'm like, you were just, just two episodes ago, you were all like, my father is a great man. What the frick changed your mind? Bolin's tears? I... Bolin cries all the time. <laughs> my God, it's, it's, it's like that, it's like Rush Limbaugh, he cries I mean, so often. If they're going to change, there should be like a no, moment. No, no, no. Right. no, Glenn Beck. Not... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, but... and it's not really that meaningful when Bowling cries because it's so over the top and melodramatic that no one cares. We just laugh at him. That's what happens when he cries. We laugh. Half the time, yeah. Uh, well, if... if they feel pity for him, then sure, I could get behind that. I pity him all the time. <laughs> if, if they're going to change their attitude towards their father, there should be like a big moment of horror. You know, like, or, oh or my god, what have you done? Clear that there's been Father, a... don't do this. Or make it more clear that there's been some sort of moment. Like, uh, like the, the boy was almost killed. And yeah. and the and Unalak was like, yeah, fuck that. I, I don't care. Well, Just and, open the fucking and, portal. And, and the thing fuckers. is, in the aftermath, the boy didn't care either. He was still like, my father's a great man. And then it's like, oh, I've been reminded of the fact that he was allowing me to die. Maybe we should change our position. I know you're supposed to be the creepy twins, but... You you could put more emotion There's, into this. When you're playing an emotionless character, the key is not to play them as totally emotionless. Uh, that sounds weird, but like yeah, look at all the subtle emo things emotionless. Be I'm putting quotes around that. Emotionless <laughs> characters in history that have been really famous. Ray Ayanami, uh Spock. Yeah. Yeah. You I, I can't really uh, Data. Yeah. Yeah, Data's a good one. Yeah, but uh, but even Data he's emotionless, but he has these little twer he, he, the subtleties, and, and, and he made sense underneath it all. You know what I mean? Yeah, like um, uh, and he ha could come up with these amazing things. Like he came up with a reason why he shouldn't be taken apart and put back together again, exactly the way he was. Uh, I have been studying games of chance hmm. for. I have read of every uh, book on the subject. He played. Yeah, yeah. But when I the time came to actually play, I found the experience to be much different than what I had come to expect. Hmm. If I am taken apart and reconstructed, I might lose. The essence, the flavor of what's had been done, mm -hmm. it might be lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the point here being basically there was an interesting thought there, as opposed to oh yeah, I forgot the whole thing where he tried to kill me, and now suddenly I'm thinking about it. Like if it wasn't a big deal to you at first, why is it a big deal now? And if it's going to be a big deal now, it should have been a big deal at first, and that would have been easy. He could have been shown instead of my father's a great man. He could sort of be quiet and you know like, thinking about like, it. Like my father's a great man. 
but but show it shows like his inner struggle, just quiet, yeah. right? not not standing behind him and defending him to the hilt, yeah. which you know he tried to stab that hilt into your back. Yeah, uh, or the sword, as the case may be. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, and we're not ready yet. We're getting to the moment of ultimate stupid. I know you've been with us since episode one of Korra, but it's the ultimate moment of stupid. We're going with the, the Bolin. What? Is that the Berlin moment or the other? Which moments? Which one is the ultimate one? There's so many to choose from. <laughs> oh. Oh wait, wait, wait. Were we done with Berlin? But I'll. Because we'll the, the thing with the ice and the crying, I was gonna get to. Okay, yeah, that was dumb, but that wasn't the ultimate moment of stupid. Okay. Well, go ahead, I guess. She decides that the Cora war- decides unilaterally without oh, any right, decision from anyone else. To leave the spirit portals open. Yeah. Uh, when every single spirit we have seen. Except, but to this well, point, hmm. I would adv- I would say that Rava is a different kind of it, but is made of metric fuck tons of douche. Uh, what I, there are several nice spirits we saw, actually. Yeah, really. Uh, was it before they turned into the horrible soul-eating monsters? Because one of the characters started to sniffle and cry. Yeah, that will be applied to that episode. <laughs> so they don't do that anymore. Now well, we can go meet okay, the... Well, let's think of the, the nice spirit we met. Oh, there's Hei Bei, the, the panda monster that uh, was concerned about the destruction of his forest. Oh, yeah, he kept eating people's souls and kidnapped Sokka. Or the painted lady. Oh, she was really nice. She just wanted to defend her river. Oh, wait, she kidnapped Katara. How could I have forgotten? Oh, and let's not forget Mr. Kindness Personified... Ko the Face Stealer! I was not going to name Ko. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well, I know, I know, I know. I know. So, there, there, look, look, the okay. two frogs that were getting married. Okay, those yeah, were not and evil. and the instant one kid started to have a temper tantrum, uh, they turned oh, mean. Me apply, okay. So, the instant one of these things goes into a town that's not IVing Prozac into their system 24-7, <laughs> they're going to turn into fucking Godzilla and eat people! Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Godzilla doesn't really eat people. He more snobs on them. He, he feeds on radiation. But but that's not the point! <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. yeah, I mean, the, she she does this... You were, and here's the, the thing that really boggles me about this whole decision. Yeah. Korra is the only one who can defend herself against spirits with her little twirly water thing that yeah, makes... Yeah, that needs a name. Yeah. That makes spirits good or destroyed or whatever the fuck it does. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. You're the only one who can do that, sweetie. And here's the other thing. Only benders could possibly be able to replicate that. So you're fucking over entire nations on the basis of humans and spirits should live together. Well, that's not been the experience that this whole season has been about. The whole season has been about there are dark spirits, yeah. people being manipulated by humans' emotions. Thus, they should stay as far apart as is conceivably possible. In fact, you should seal the portal and seal yourself so that, you know, your spirit doesn't act as a bridge. Well, I think that would freak things up in a different way. But, uh, but yeah, I mean... Basically, she, she says, maybe Juan made a mistake. No, he didn't. I know. I'm getting to that. <laughs> maybe Juan made a mistake in separating the two worlds. There's absolutely no evidence that that's the case. No, not one single character has suffered due to this separation. No one, right? Yeah. In fact, you could argue people's lives have been improved by lack of spirits. I yeah. mean, remember? Uh, I mean, we didn't have dark spirit attacks before. before yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean... Yeah, what was up with the dark spirits? Because they sort of showed up anyway. Ah, whatever. Yeah, I get the. Um, I mean, I guess if you if they'd set it up like okay, because they're disconnected, that's what causes dark spiritism to happen. You know, like because their their energy is out of balance or something, and then you'd be like, oh, I see. So in the long run, the, the worlds need to be together. But they didn't do that. They they, they all turned dark because Unalak said so, or Vatu said so, or whatever. And both of those guys are dead now. So, uh, there's no, you know, reason to, I mean, okay, you could argue that the opposite way, too. You could say, oh, those two guys are dead now, so I guess the spirits aren't so dark anymore. But I'm pretty sure Ko is still evil, no matter what you do. And then there's the scorpion thing. That the clearly scorpion wasn't... Thing. She's giving that speech at the end, like, I've decided to leave the portal open. I said to you, I just want the scorpion to interrupt in the middle of this. Like, ah! Oh wait, I forgot that guy was in there. Oh yeah, and then there's then there's Wan Chi Tong the fucking owl. 
Yeah, at least he's not the type who will attack unless you. Oh mess no, him no, first. he's just the kind that will betray people yeah. and turn them over to their enemies. How could I have forgotten him in my list of spirits with wonderful track records? <laughs> oh, and let's not forget Ko. I mean, not Ko. Um, uh, either Tui or Law, who decided to go on a murderous rampage the instant his partner was killed. That was sure peaceful and helpful. Mm. Oh, and, and Rava! How do, how is it when every time Aang gets upset, Rava goes berserk <laughs> and starts... Uh, remember the time with the Sandbenders when Aang was really upset and Rava threatened to cap a few bitches? Because that happened. And how about the time? And how about the fact that every one of Aang's past lives advocated murdering the fuck out of Ozai? Okay, murdering Ozai is like murdering Hitler. I can get behind that. Okay, uh, granted, yeah. but still, it's. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's a lot. Basically, there's just no clear advantage oh, and, and, to and, bringing the worlds together. Oh, and Boom Jun, the the stupid rabbit thing that uh, Boomy adopted. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Boom Jun, so innocent and carefree. Delivered Jinora to Unalak. You are made of stupid, Kara. When in six months, when the world is a flaming ruin and they're all blaming the Avatar, I will laugh and I will laugh and laugh. That'll be the third season. Right? The third season will just be me laughing It'll my ass off. It'll just be ass called off. Too Many Spirits. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just so vague the way any of that worked and uh i can see i said earlier i can get behind the idea of changing up the world in a big way and if there had been a good reason to bring the worlds together that'd be cool because then we get to the season three and we'd be like oh there's a big change the world is different now isn't that cool but if it, it had to make sense you know and it, yeah it, did, it didn't make sense what you did it felt like the writers were like we need to make things different for season three how can we do that spirits oh okay <laughs> you know Heck, I can't even go back to the Wan episode where spirits would randomly possess people, turn them into monsters, if not outright kill them. Yeah, that was weird. Because remember, we talked about it earlier that it wasn't clear that the humans were really being dicks to the spirits. Like, you know, oh, you know, there was some other food somewhere they could have gotten. It seemed like they were just trying to feed themselves. Uh, so, yeah, the spirits seemed kind of dickish there, too, even though we made friends with them. Yeah, I seem to remember the world where the spirits lived everywhere. Um, I seem to recall we to humanity. Yeah. I seem to recall humanity being uh, mere remnants of each other, uh, yeah. living on the backs of lion turtles. Yeah, and then and then we had that thing where they were fighting each other, and like, oh, we need to separate so we can both be safe from each other. And now, eh, whatever. I mean, I, I get it. Like Vatu is dead, so he doesn't make dark spirits anymore. But still. Even if you can say the risks are not as bad as they were, I don't see the benefit. I don't see, like, it would be so great if we could go to the spirit world because... I don't get it. There's nothing there, you know? Or if spirits could come to our world because... Because why? There's nothing there. Yeah, all that's here... Sightseeing? Like, there's nothing there. <laughs> the spirit world is best kept uh, very far from the rest of the world. Uh, um... Yeah, and it's... she consults no one on this. She doesn't go to Republic City. She doesn't ask the Fire Nation. Yeah. Doesn't ask any of the other, you know, nations of the world who would be affected by this. That'd be kind of neat if she had, like, a conference and actually was mature about it. And yeah, nope, nope. Just, uh, <laughs> Cora says it's good, so it must be all good. The freaking and, scorpion and you know comes out. And you know what's the sad part about this? Hmm. The worst part hmm. is that I know that she's going to be proven right in the end. Yeah. Because <laughs> Cora is the protagonist, and so she always has the victory. Yeah. No, no. I mean, we had... Back with Aang. We had him looking in and wondering if what he was doing was the right thing. Yeah. I mean, Cora hesitated for all of 30 seconds, but yeah. Yeah, for all of 30 seconds before going ahead with whatever stupid idiot plan pops into her stupid idiot head. Well, she broke up with Mako, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a neat scene, actually. They were both, you know, melancholy. Uh, though the, con the history that got them to that breakup was just so kind of weird that... Uh, you know, and I liked her, like, oh, yeah, I got that memory back now. Like, just freaking writers keep making up new rules about what memory she does or does not have. Or, oh, speaking of memories, back in the Tree of Time, which has, like, C-SPAN, as you said. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's my memories. And she's looking at her memories and looking at her memories and looking at uh, freaking Unalak tearing down the statue. Court, you weren't there. How are you remembering that one? <laughs> it's my memories and a bunch of other stuff, apparently. Just randomly. Um, okay. 
And okay, and I can accept it's the tree of time, meaning that it's it sees things from all over time yeah, and space. Yeah, but if, then they shouldn't have said it's my memories. It should be, you know, just it. Look, look at that, you know. Um, little bits on the, how you phrase things too. I remember when uh, Mako and Bolin were guarding the spirit portal so Unlock couldn't get back in, and Bolin's like, "We can't win this fight." And Mako says. We don't need to win this fight. We just need to hold him here long enough so that uh, Korra can defeat Vatu or whatever. And I thought, you don't, don't, you're talking so long. How about we don't need to win this fight? We just need to hold him here. Cause, See, that's cause, a great line. Because if we're watching the show, like we know why you're doing this. Like we didn't tune in just now. We, we've been here for, since the beginning of the episode, at least. You don't need to re-explain it every time. Um, and here's the thing, tactics. Why didn't Bolin yeah. make a gigantic fortress wall around right. the portal all the way like 20 story, no, five. Even just 10 feet high would be great. Just a big wall, right? And then Yeah, make it spiky. If you... and, make it, if I, and then Unalak would have to jump over it or something and just, you know, make an obvious entrance of himself. Yeah, instead he just, sur- he literally surfs into the scene. I love that Unalak was like lazy when he did that. He's like, oh, here I come to the portal. It's not like there's a limit in time for me to get in there. Yeah, everyone was like that. It's like, yep, just gonna do this now. Yep, totally doing it. I mean, even when they're looking for Janora, like, a, Janora's in trouble, but B, even if Janora's, you know, not gonna die or something, which she is in her, in her physical body, we would still need to hurry up and get her so we can get back to Korra and help her with that epic fight that she's having. Yeah, I mean, Instead, we not... talked to a freaking fungus and, like, you know, what was the urgency? Do you remember at the end of, of the first se- se- first show, Avatar The Last Airbender? Yeah. Uh, and we got to the climax, and everything that was happening was big all the time and it was these people that know each other having these confrontations and they were fighting and it all clicked and made sense um you know a couple things were a little off but that was fine it had the emotive weight that it needed to have and this you know i said earlier about the mood whiplash type of feeling um and stuff like that oh yeah and then so when then mako and bo then are are you know frozen in blocks of ice except their heads so they can make a plea for mercy uh, when you know any competent person would have said, uh, Unalak should have gone. I mean, he's planning to destroy the world. He he can't be like destroy the world, but don't kill anyone. <laughs> I this don't know what Nicol- he's planning to do. But, yeah. uh, but Unalak is like, yeah, make sure they don't escape again. Okay, see, at this point, he should be like, uh, yes, they've escaped again. Kill them, and then they yeah. drive ice spikes into Mako and Bolin's brains. Yeah, you could do that. Um, yeah, gruesome. but nope, nope. We we have them on. Un- Locked so we can have the strange, tearful reunion of a uh, uh, Bolin and Esna. Uh, and why was that? St- why were they together? Why did he like her? Yeah, he no, was, he never liked her at all. Yeah, it was a horrible, abusive relationship. It, it should, was. And and they were like, oh, but he secretly loved her the whole time. Then why was he chasing after Ginger in Republic City? Yeah, that would have been interesting. You imagine him like having an, an an option for Ginger if Ginger was a little more interested, and then he finds himself holding back, and then like it's revealed privately that oh wait, he had some friends' feelings for Esna, who in my version of events, let's pretend actually had some redeeming qualities, you know? Yeah, instead of being evil, Ray Ayanami. Yeah. But done badly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, he cries, and, and, and as soon as Mako was like, wow, that was great acting, I'm like, oh, I know what the next line is, and it doesn't make any sense, and Bolin's like, yeah, acting. Like a... And then he wipes away a single and tear to he, show his love. And he totally says, I love you later. I'm like, why do you love her? Is it, uh, what, she you only like... hurts you. She, uh... I mean, granted, this might be a trait of abusive relationships. I don't know. I've never been in one. Yeah, but they're not taking this thing intelligently enough to actually make that play. Watch uh, Harley, the Harley and the Ivy from Batman the Animated Series and they had a great thing of harley is in an abusive relationship with joker and it was a kid's cartoon but they actually like were intelligent about it they're, they're not trying for anything like that in this case they're not even thinking of that oh no they, they um, weren't even thinking yeah <laughs> it's, uh, it's just all these you have so much potential cora yeah but you keep squandering it on stupid uh, yeah yeah cora um, where potential goes to die more or less 
Is there anything else we're gonna do the, 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 Yeah, crying thing. I'm glad, I mean, they, see, it's just a cry and love her, and then they have to, like, break up immediately thereafter, because the writers don't want Esna sticking around as a main character or whatever. Uh, I will go to the North, because, you know, I feel like it. I, they don't even give a good reason I don't for them love to go you to the anymore North. From 10 At minutes best, ago. what is waiting for you is a war crimes trial, because you helped Unalak to nearly destroy the world. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, also, you helped destroy an enemy resistance movement in the South. Yeah. So you were soldiers in a war. That was a imbecile thing. Um, oh, what was the? Ugh, man, there's so much to process here. Uh, but yeah. So, oh, oh, so they, 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 the, 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 the Esna's brother is all like, oh, maybe we should consider reconsider our position, and then Bolin cries, and then Esna's like, fine, we'll let you both out, and you can go fight our father and try and save the world, and we will just stand here. I, th I thought the world was in jeopardy, you two. Why, why don't you go help him fight your dad? If you want to save the world, are you just... What is going on? What is what your, is your motivation? Why are you doing this? Were you promised, like, you get to control the Fire Nation? The smoldering remains of? I, I don't even know. I, and they get that comes from the root of what's Udalak trying to do. Conquer or destroy? I don't even know. He wants to combine the worlds, but he's got Vatu in him, and Vatu is the destroyer, so shouldn't they be destroying? They're just... It's just, you know, vagueness built on more vagueness, and it just keeps going down. Um, yeah. Okay, so, in short, uh, Vatu had no plan. Um, the twins were creepy and pointless. Bo Lin was in a horrible, abusive relationship and cannot escape. Uh, Mako and Korra broke up. Um, apparently, unlocking supreme cosmic energy is incredibly easy. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you have no training in uh, meditation or anything. <sighs> uh, and Korra has doomed the world because she just let Ko out. Yeah. Who Ko let the Ko out? <laughs> Ko is going to walk around and just start looking at people, and they're all going to lose their faces. That'll be the start of season three. Just this crowd of faceless people like not screaming but running as if they were screaming you know Cora's like oh wait never mind i shouldn't have done that um so yeah i guess that's about yeah that's it. about everything yeah and boy is it everything very much for now well, join us again when we hit well, next episode really but whatever we do next episode we don't know yet yep so yeah Here's hoping season three actually has potential. We'll find out. Uh, anyways, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. We're signing off.